Hi, and welcome to Your Future, Your Finances. We've got a great guest for you today. If you're a Montgomery County resident and proud of it, we have the executive editor of the Sentinel Newspapers, uh, Brian Karam. Welcome to the show. Hey, Brian. Right. <laughs> Brian, Brian. How yeah. you doing, Brian? <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about the paper. I saw it's over 100 years old now. Well, actually, it's 161 years old. We were around before the Civil War, actually. Fantastic. So uh, we actually have coverage of the Battle of Gettysburg in our newspaper, and we've covered pretty much every major news event since then. And uh, we're the last, uh, I guess we'll be the last one out and turn off the light when we leave newspaper. Um, there used to be the Journal and the Gazette, and they're both gone, and we're still here. Mm -hmm. So uh, more power to us, I guess. Support your local press. Buy early, buy often. And there's a Montgomery County and then a Prince George's County. Yes, we have two newspapers, one in Prince George's. That one is about 100 years old. And uh, the Montgomery County Sentinel, which is the original. Mm -hmm. Actually started by a Confederate uh, sympathizer who had to hide when the uh, uh, Union Army came through. And he actually put out a couple of copies of the paper from his barn <laughs> in the 1860s. So, you know, adds to the lore of the, of sure. the newspaper. Sure. And the reporters mm -hmm. that work with you, they're, they're local. Local residents? We have uh, local graduates, uh, some who've moved here to work with us. Um, I'm very proud of the staff this year. I'll be happy to announce that uh, for the second time in four years, the Maryland Delaware District of Columbia Press Association mm -hmm. has named us the News Organization of the Year. So, uh, Mazel Tov to the staff and everybody for what they've done. Fantastic. And you guys are transitioning more to uh, web based, video based, all sorts of. Over online. the last few years, we found that you know any kind of business model has to include video and, and a web presence. So we indeed have you know a, seven of our first place awards this year were for our video production. So that's the kind of stuff that you have to do to stay on. I, I say you can't get ahead of the wave, but you better ride the wave. Yeah, right. Um, so that's people uh, going online, watching the news stories, much like they would have. But our you YouTube still have the channel, print. our Facebook, our Twitter accounts, uh, all of that. Uh, there's so many ways to get the news out these days. You know, the recent shooting that occurred on Aspen Hill and at uh, the Montgomery Mall, for example, we were tweeting things out as it occurred, putting it on our mm -hmm. Facebook. We're not a, a weekly newspaper anymore. We're a 24-7, you know, news yeah. and information service. That coincidentally publishes a weekly <laughs> capsule of itself. That seems to be the way the newspaper industry is going. It's news all the, the time. The only way to survive is, uh, I, honestly, I can't be there first anymore. Somebody with a cell phone is going <laughs> to beat me to it. But what we can do, the coin of the realm for any newspaper uh, is vetted information, factual information, so you can make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, the old saying... It, you know, attributed Abe Lincoln, he walks in, you know, he tells a story of a young man who walks in and tells his mother that his older sister and their boyfriend, he found them out in the barn with with their clothes off and he thinks they're going to, you know, uh, go to the bathroom in the barn. So you can get the facts straight and still come to the wrong conclusions, but hopefully we're still trying to get the facts straight. <laughs> and what are some of the uh, stories going on in Montgomery County these days? Uh, some of the biggest ones, of course, are the taxation problems. Uh, the recordation tax is huge. Uh, there are a lot of people up in arms about that. Um, budget problems in the county and with uh, uh, the schools. And as Ike Leggett, our, our uh, county executive, said, with the shortfall, we can either raise taxes or cut services or a combination of both. And so the county council's wrangling with that issue even as we speak. That's mm -hmm. going to be huge over the next few years. And, of course, uh, the growth potential in the county is, is, is one of the things that's causing a lot of consternation. Mm -hmm. Do we want to grow more? Do we not want to grow more? If we grow more, how are we going to grow more? If we don't grow, why won't we? Um, we're a bedroom community for the district, and many people have considered for years the viability of Montgomery County based on the federal budget because we get a you know, good deal of money from them. Yeah. But uh, in trying to be sustainable, uh, you're going to have to wean yourself off of that. and mm -hmm. It's kind of tough for a county used to millions and billions of dollars over the years coming from the federal government. Yeah, right. It's also fun. I mean, you, know, you can't <laughs> cover uh, politicians in any more fun environment than fighting about money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the things I like about local papers is you can actually like get involved in the story. So you have uh, people who, who read it and then they'll, um, they'll actually be able to take action or communicate with the reporter or know what to do. Well, that's, you know, that is, the, the, when I first got into this business, 80% uh, of the business was owned by about 26 
major companies. Now, 95% of the business is owned by about five or six companies. Mm. Real independent journalism doesn't even exist anymore, except at the local level, and it's very important because most of the decisions made in government that are going to affect you or me are made at a local level. And so it's important that we have an independent voice, and we provide that interactive independent voice for people to get involved with. It's a lot of fun, actually. And uh, I've been called, you know, a, a communist. Uh, and <laughs> over one column, I was called a, a left-wing tree hugger and a right-wing radical. So I figured I anchored both sides of the fence, and I must be doing my job. Yep. <laughs> I got everybody mad at me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what kind of ha – another thing that we like talking about this show is from an occupation standpoint, how businesses and industries like work. So how, do, how does a newspaper actually make a living? How do you make money? Off of our advertising, a lot of people think it's off of subscriptions. And, of course, one of the reasons why we're still here as opposed to the Gazette and others is that we do – you have to be an interactive – you have to want the newspaper. Mm -hmm. You have to. We, you have to subscribe to it or purchase it. We don't throw it on your driveway for free. Mm -hmm. We consider the news a commodity that you should invest in because vetted information takes money to gather, and so you should be part of it. But advertising makes up the bulk of uh, the way we make our money, legal advertising and display advertising and classified. Display meaning online? Well, display and uh, display advertising online or in the newspaper itself. Also, video advertising is huge now, too. Mm -hmm. I can I can make a commercial a tenth of the rate that a television station will make for you, and it's just as good. So look us up and pay. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We're talking with Brian Karam, executive editor of uh, the Sentinel newspapers. We'll be right back.